That door must lead to the backstage. Hello, Fabian. It's me again. Oh, welcome back, Officer Wallace. Why does Matahari behave so strangely? What do you mean by strange, Officer Wallace? I'm referring to her distant and elusive behavior. Oh, that. Nobody knows why she behaves that way, but I have a theory. You do? What is it? I think it is all part of her uh, stage act. You think she's acting even when she's not on stage? Yes, I believe it is all part of her disguise. But why all this secrecy? Don't you see? She wants to remain an enigma. An enigma? You know, a mystery to everyone around her. Do you believe this behavior has an effect on her audience? I'm sure of it. Was Mr. Bogdanov able to be objective about his sex life? Well, as I mentioned to you before, I think he joked around a lot. And as a part of his jokes, he may have exaggerated about his sexual encounters. So, he never told sexual stories in a serious manner? Of course not. The man was like a comedian. All his stories caused everyone to burst into laughter. Is that right? I wonder if his female friends would have been laughing. I assure you, they would not. Then why would the men find those stories to be so funny? Oh, you know men. They love gossiping about women. And was it politically correct of them to laugh at these stories? I suppose not, but they certainly didn't care. What kind of an establishment is this? allowing respected citizens of our society to behave so immaturely. I certainly don't think the devotees would initiate such rude behavior. Well, you seem to know nothing about typical devotee behavior. They are far from being the conformist that most people imagine them to be. You mean they are not calm, cool, and collected? <laughs> These devotees become a rowdy bunch when they get together, and if they are in a good mood, anything goes. I don't know what to say. Was Matahari aware of Mr. Bogdanov's infatuation with her? Of course she was. How can you be so sure? Officer Wallace, even when she is busy dancing, Mata Ari is very aware of what's happening around her. She knows that every man in the establishment is drooling over her. I don't understand. How can you tell? I can tell by the look in their eyes. Mata Ari knows this too, and to keep it that way, when she is not performing, she visits the tables of customers and spreads her attention around, so that no one feels neglected. What does she do at the tables? Does she do a lap dance or something? A lap dance? You've got to be kidding me. Matahari is far too sophisticated to perform such a vulgar act. Although, the clients wouldn't mind it at all, I'm sure. You mean your regular devotees would welcome such an act? Sure they would. They have the same hormones as other males. They too can become a rowdy bunch when the conditions are right. So, how does she contain them when she visits the tables? She is a master people handler. When she sits at a table, she steers the conversation in such a way that all the men around her are transformed into obedient and shy 12-year-olds. Really? How can she do that? Beats me. I have never seen any woman like her. She is unique.
Please tell Matahari to call me. I don't think I can. Why not? Because I am not supposed to pass messages on to her. Then I want to talk to the club manager. She can't help you with that either. What are you talking about? I am here for official business. You're obligated to help me with my investigation. I assure you that I am doing everything I can to be honest with you. I have absolutely no contact with her, and I know the manager doesn't either. Then tell me her real name. I'll track her down myself. I don't even know her real name. No one does. Doesn't she have a contract? I assume she does. To my knowledge, her work order came here directly from our company's headquarters in Las Vegas. All right. I'll contact your company's HQ through GPSN channels to find out her name. You're going to make all that effort? I don't give up that easily, Fabian. Thanks for all your help, Fabian. Perhaps I'll come back here someday, just for entertainment. I'll see you then. Certainly, Officer Wallace. I feel so tired of all this Matahari talk. There's Mr. Mikhailov, sitting at the same table. Hello, Mr. Mikhailov. I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace, from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Hello, Officer Wallace. What can I do for you? Do you come here often, sir? Well, I try to visit here at least once, when I'm in town. How did you first come to this place? Oh, an old friend of mine, uh, Vasily Bogdanov, suggested it to me. I see. I wanted to invite him today, but I could not reach him. He must be out of town. I'm sorry, but I have some terrible news for you. Uh, what happened? I is he okay? I'm afraid not. Mr. Bogdanov is dead. Uh, how come? I don't understand. How can he die? Mr. Bogdanov was murdered on April 7th in Odessa. Murdered? In Odessa? My God! I'm sorry for your loss, sir. I don't know what to say, officer. I'm really sorry for your loss, Mr. Mikhailov. But I need to ask you some questions, so that we can shed some light on Mr. Bogdanov's death. Of course, officer. Anything. I admire the way you pulled yourself together. Despite your loss, I've seen so many other people that cannot act rationally after learning about the incident. You admire me, huh? Well, what can I say? You will not be the first one. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. I will do anything to help you, Phoenix. What is the purpose of your visit to the World Union, Mr. Mikhailov? I suppose I came here to meet you, Phoenix. Come again. You want me to? Oh, you kinky little thing. What are you talking about? Don't think that I didn't notice you checking me out while you were at the bar. Mr. Mikhailov, you are totally misunderstanding me. There is no misunderstanding, dear. I understand you perfectly. I need to leave now, but I will be back. I will be waiting for you, sweets. I feel terrible. That jerk. I need to talk to Sandra. Sorry I had to drag you in here this late at night, Sandra. It's okay. You look shattered. Tell me, what's wrong? It's this Russian friend of Bogdanov's. He made a disgusting pass at me. Oh, how repulsive. What did you do? I didn't know what to do. I just walked out and called you. Oh, poor Phoebe. I think you should go back and show that stinker. We won't put up with that kind of behavior in the Union. I don't know if I can. I feel violated. Of course you can. Just go in there and show him what you're made of. You're right. 
I should get a grip on myself. Thanks, Sandra. Mr. Mikhailo, we are from different systems, and I believe you misunderstood my responses the last time I was here. This is serious, and I am not making a pass at you. I need your full cooperation in this case. Remember that you are a guest at the World Union, and you are bound by the regulations here. Even the smallest lie is not tolerated in this system. I understand very well, officer. Where did you meet Vasily Bogdanov? In Minsk, a city in Russia. Was this before he immigrated? Of course. We were childhood friends. Well, you must know him very well. Perhaps I know him better than anyone. But nobody can really know what's in Vasily's head. Matahari? Of course I do. Everybody likes her. She is so charming. Poor Vasily liked her too, you know. Yes, I know. Did Mr. Bogdanov know her well? As well as anybody can know her, I suppose. Despite her charms, Matahari is a very reserved woman. Do you visit here often, Mr. Mikhailov? Yes, I do. What is your line of business? I am a trade representative, 
I create and manage international trade between Russia and the World Union. Do you plan to stay here for a while, then? Yes, I do. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay in the Union, Mr. Mikhailov. Maybe I'll see you around. Goodbye. I don't like her manners at all, but there's something hypnotic in the way she dances.